Hi, welcome, Movadi Yogis. My name is Andrea. This is your Hatha Yoga practice. Thank you for joining. Welcome. Hello, hello, welcome to your Hatha Yoga practice. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hi, Jen. Welcome. Let me know how you're doing. Oh, hi. Oh, it's good to see you too, Maria. Welcome. Let me know how you're doing today. Another beautiful sunny day here in Burlington. So I'm from the Burlington Movadi Club. If there's anyone from Edmonton or out that way, we will be opening a Movadi Club later this year in Edmonton area. So if you know any family or friends, um, they can get in on um, that sort of founders membership and uh, and if you know of any instructors too they're looking for um, instructors personal trainers welcome we'll give you a few minutes for everyone to log on and join the live class if you are just kind of scrolling through. Uh, this will be posted uh, after the end of the practice. You can come back to it, um, share it with friends or family. Anyone can access it, um, which is awesome. So you can move together if you'd like, um, or even just bookmark it and come back to the practice again. It's always a different experience taking the same class a second time. Good morning, welcome. We will need some um, props for the practice today. Um, really fun, different practice that we'll use our blocks throughout the class. So if you have two yoga blocks, you'll wanna grab those and have them set up. If you don't have a yoga blocks, um, you can use um, a Kleenex box, which sounds kind of odd, but it works. We gotta get creative now. So a Kleenex box is roughly about the same as kind of the yoga brick, and you'll be using that for when we use uh, the props between the hands. And then for any of the blocks uh, that we'll use between the thighs, you can use a rolled up towel, uh, a firm small pillow, uh, something to squeeze or connect to those deep abdominal muscles. So there is, a nice core uh, stability focus in the practice today. I know that that was requested by someone last week. Welcome, happy Thursday. Again, if you're just tuning in, uh, let me know how you're doing. We will begin in another couple of minutes. Yes, the Hatha class, yesterday's Hatha, yeah, yesterday's Hatha class was posted to the Instagram main page. So if you go back to the page, it should be on, uh, I think it should be the second video from yesterday. It was with Sue. Um, she was kind enough to lead the practice. I had a bit of a, a fall on ice. So my back is a little, a little sore today, so I will be modifying a little bit. I encourage you to do the same or intensify and uh, really tune into your own individual practice. So lots of options.
again, welcome, Movadi yogis. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me on your mats today uh, for your 45 minutes Hatha practice. My name is Andrea. I'm from the Burlington Movadi Club. Um, and again, we will be using either two yoga bro blick, bro uh, bricks or blocks, <laughs> as they're called. So two of the yoga bricks if you have it, or if you don't have yoga uh, blocks, you can use a Kleenex box and a rolled up towel or cushion. So let's go ahead and get set up um, on our mats. And if you have that block close by, let's even sit up on it uh, or even on your cushion or towel. Um, just encouraging the spine to be nice and tall here uh, as we move through and connect with our breath to begin. And so take a nice full breath in and then exhale through the mouth, let it go. Let's close the mouth and begin to breathe in and out through your nose. Slowly starting to introduce your Ujjayi breath. And if you're not familiar with the Ujjayi breath, on your exhale, you're firming up, drawing the navel towards the spine and pressing the air out through the back of the throat, through the nose. So just like you were fogging up a mirror, but with the mouth closed. So inhale, and then exhale, firm up through the belly. Ujjayi breath through the back of the throat and start to circulate and cleanse the breath there. Continue to breathe slowly and deeply, exhaling through the back of the throat, hearing that slightly audible wave-like sound. And as we connect our breath to our body, feeling that breath, again, starting at the base of the belly and pressing up through the ribs and chest, focusing on the core center. Take five more cycles of that even Ujjayi breath. Feeling that energy in the core center. So we call this area in yoga our solar plexus energy or chakra area. And the center of our vitality and inner strength and energy. So really starting to move that through the body with each breath. Take one more round. Big inhale through the nose, exhale through the back of the throat. And then take one more longer inhale through the nose. And this time open the mouth, exhale, sigh through the mouth. Bringing your awareness back onto the space that you're sitting in. And we're going to begin on our backs. So just moving the block from out from underneath you and then rolling onto our backs. So keep that block or Kleenex box close by if you have that. We're gonna begin to get right into connecting and integrating the core. So as mentioned, we're gonna use our yoga block or equivalent to that through the practice to bring that proprioceptive awareness into the body so that we can move deeper into our core stability. 
So starting to lift the feet off the floor, knees over the hips. We're gonna bring our yoga block or Kleenex to the tops of the thighs. And then we're gonna bring our backs of our elbows to hold it into place. And we're gonna lift our head off the floor and we're gonna squeeze the elbows into the block and then the thighs into the block. So we're kind of compressing it together. And try not to strain the neck. So neck is kind of lined up with the, um, sorry, the head is lined up with the neck. So we're not dropping it back or the chin's not in towards the chest. I'm already starting to feel something kind of warming going on through the core center, uh, what's known as our core compression. So we're really firming up, drawing that navel towards the spine, which also helps with um, our forward bends as well. And right, holding the brick in place here as we exhale, extend the left leg out long, or you can tap the toe on the floor, trying to maintain the even arch through that low back. So notice if the ribs are really popping out and then bring the knee back to chest and then switch right leg extends long. Again, firming up through the low belly, draw back in, hold the brick and then left arm extends long overhead elbow back into place and then switch right arm extends long keep squeezing the block towards the elbows and thighs and then this time extend both left arm and left leg long now you can modify by just doing the leg and then bring it back into place one more time right leg right arm extends long trying to keep that uh, natural arch in the spine. So notice if it's really popping out and then bring it back in, lower the head down. Whew, and then give that a nice big stretch, arms and legs long. So we're gonna kind of balance the energy by opening up the body as well with our blocks. So let's come back in to center, taking the knees back over the hips and this time take the uh, block between the inner thighs, just above the knees, or just below the knees. So that lower part of the thighs. You're using your um, towel here if you don't have a brick. And then taking the second block into the hands, pressing the hands towards one another. Again, using the Kleenex box in the hands if that's what you have. And start to lift head and shoulders, connecting again to our center, firming up through the navel and pelvic floor. Exhale, tap the toes down. Inhale, bring the knees back in through center. Exhale, extend arms and arms overhead. And then inhale, come back into center. Exhale, tap the toes down. Inhale through center, arms reach overhead, exhale. Inhale, reach up. And this time you can try lowering the legs and the arms simultaneously. You can intensify this by straightening the legs. And today I'm going to keep my knees bent from up through the navel center, reaching long, press the brick together with the hands, the inner thighs, turning on those deep, core stabilizers. Stay for five, four, three, two, and one. Draw everything in. Let the uh, bricks go down to the floor. Draw your knees to your chest and just take a few hip circles, knees together, knees separated. And the knees draw into your chest, and we're just going to rock and roll a few times up and back. And then eventually coming all the way up and over onto our knees. And we're just going to use our props here to open the chest, kind of stretch the front side of the body as well as the shoulders. So if you have your yoga blocks, just placing them about shoulder width apart taking that kind of back part of the elbow, so just below the bone, to the back of your 
or the top of your yoga block. Again, if you don't have blocks, just bring your arms to the floor. Keeping the hips over top of the knees. And then as you exhale, start to drop the head and chest down towards the floor between the arms. You can have the palms pressing in towards one another or if your elbows are on the ground here, you can even use your prop between the hands to add a different sensation or stretch for the upper back and shoulders. And staying here, really breathing into that space, opening up through the chest, through the abdomen. Gonna take one more inhale. So this is kind of a variation of our puppy pose that we would do in our practice. It's kind of one of my favorite stretches here. And then slowly start to lift the head. And bring yourself back upright. Just move the props off to the side for a moment. Coming into our tabletop. Hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips as we start to move through the spine here. Inhale, chest opens, tailbone lifts. Exhale, tailbone tucks, rounding through that upper back. Inhale, rolling through, belly drops, shoulder blades draw back. Exhale, hollow out the belly, shoulder blades spread apart. Three more rounds of your cow and cat pose and starting to move the breath through the spine last time through inhale chest opens exhale rounding through the spine and then come back in through center into a neutral spine we're gonna go ahead and grab our block or towel and place it between those inner thighs where we had it when we were lying down. So again, kind of in that lower part, just above the knee joint, All right? Squeeze or hug the thigh bones towards one another. And what this does is really turn on those deep, low abdominal muscles through the pelvic floor. Curl the toes under, and then we're gonna lift the hips up into our downward facing dog holding our prop between the thighs and then spread the fingers wide draw the shoulder blades back and then hug the thighs towards one another and lift up through the pelvic floor notice if you feel a little bit more space into the lower part of the spine here so when we activate the front of the body it gives a little bit more space for the back side of the body, our spine. Now we're going to hold the block or equivalent here as we move through a slow vinyasa. So inhale, come forward to your plank pose. Keep squeezing those inner thighs towards one another, knees lower down. Exhale, bend the elbows, slow chaturanga down as the shoulder heads draw back. Good, inhale, draw the shoulders back as we start to lift our chest, activate the glutes into our cobra pose. Good, release. Tuck the toes, push back up onto your knees or full plank, and then hips up and back, downward facing dog, exhale. Find the breath again as we move forward back into plank pose, we're gonna hold here this time. So you can take the option to stay on the knees or take the option to stay on the toes or lower back to the knees. Hug the thighs towards one another. Strongly lifting up through the pelvic floor, navel towards spine and press the floor away. Right, the head's kind of lined up with the spine, having this long line of energy from the head to the tailbone. Staying here for another five, four, keep using that Ujjayi breath, three, two, 
One slow chaturanga down. So bend the elbows lower for five, four, three, two, and then come all the way down and stay down on the abdomen, uncurl the toes. Reach back and grab that prop out from between the thighs. And we're just going to hold it behind the body as we come into our locust lift. So activating the core back. So you can kind of hold the prop and pull it apart to squeeze the shoulder blades towards one another. Draw the shoulder heads back as you inhale and start to lift up through the chest. Maybe lift the legs. Glutes are on, squeeze the glutes. Inhale, feel that length through the head to the toes. One more breath. Lower the legs, release the arms in front, take that brick in front. Sphinx pose, forearms to the floor and kind of taking that index finger and thumb webbing between and holding the block in front. Draw the shoulders back, kind of like you're dragging the chest forward and just stretching through the front of the body. Glutes are still active here. And I gently release down. Slide the hands beside the shoulders, lift up into your plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, walk the feet to the hands, coming into a forward fold. Hopefully that block is still there at the front of your mat. Bringing it close to you in your forward folds. And finding that core compression here as we draw the navel towards the spine and hinging from the hip. So you can soften the knees, but think belly towards the thighs, supporting through the spine. Inhale, holding the yoga block in your hands as we lift halfway, lengthen the spine forward, draw the shoulders back. And then exhale, just folding back down. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, lifting halfway, lengthen the chest forwards. And then exhale, softening back down. Last time, inhale. Exhale, drawing that navel towards the spine. Just hanging out here in your forward folds for another breath. Let go through the back of the head and the shoulders. Again, you can rest the hands on that prop. And then on your next inhale, we're gonna start to come up to stand Take the prop with you as you rise up. Inhale. Extend both arms overhead into our Urdhva Hastasana or upward stretch, holding your prop between the hands. You're going to push the hands towards one another. And this is where you can go into that sort of narrow setting or wider setting if you need some more space for the shoulders. Notice if the ribs are popping out here, draw them in and really lengthen through the side body. Really add some more depth here into this side stretch. So feeling it a little bit more through the side body. And taking a, a lateral stretch as we inhale, lengthen, exhale, reaching to the right, opening that left side ribs and waist. And inhale, come through center, exhale, stretching to the left. Keep pressing your hands towards one another. And then inhale, coming back through center, keeping the arms overhead here as we step or lunge our left leg way back, coming into our high crescent lunge. Now, if it's too intense for the shoulders or you feel any impingement with the arms overhead, just take the hands uh, at chest level and press the block together there. And squeezing the inner thighs towards one another. Arms are kind of in line with the shoulders. And again, drawing that navel towards the spine and really lengthening through the side body, pressing the hands towards one another. Good. 
And moving into our balancing warrior three. So option to keep the arms overhead or if you want a little bit less intensity, take them back into your heart center or chest. Start to hinge forward, leaning the chest down towards the floor. Get lighter on those left toes as we start to reach the chest forward, lift that left leg off the floor. Got my wall here. So stretching the arms long, press through that left foot and roll the left hip down towards the floor. So the toes point towards the floor. Again, if you need a little bit less, take the hands into the chest, feel the breath. Again, really using that ujjayi breath to firm up through the belly. And transitioning into our floating half moon. So holding your prop in just the right hand, release it down to the floor underneath the shoulder. And then open the chest and hips to the left. Left arm reaches up towards the ceiling. Spread the collarbone wide. Active through that left leg. So press the heel away, engaging through that left outer glute. Now we're gonna have a little fun here and pass the block to the left hand and back. So find your breath, pick the block up and see if you can pass it to your left hand and reach it back up. Right fingertips maybe hover above the floor. <laughs> pass it back to the right hand, lower the right hand back to the floor and find your stability there. Let's do that one more time. So really using those Deep core balancing stabilizers, pass the brick to the left hand, reach it up and right fingertips can come to the floor. See if you can lift them, pass the brick back to the right hand and then slowly release that left leg back behind you and then turn to face the side of your mat. Ooh, I felt that one. Coming into a wide straddle Hinging from the hips as we tilt the pelvis, so tailbone goes back. And then as you exhale, start to fold forward, stopping about halfway. So the spine is long. Bring the block down to the floor. Hands, the right hand comes underneath the chest. Exhale as we lift the left arm up and take a twist. Draw your left shoulder back, opening through the front of the chest. Release the left hand down. Again, kind of underneath the face or the chest here. And then right arm reaches up as we exhale and turn to the side. And release the right hand down. Gonna take one more breath here, really lengthening the spine. And then slowly coming all the way up to stand. We're just gonna pivot and turn to face the back now. So the left leg is forward. Find our high crescent lunges, the right heel lifts. And again, option to reach the arms overhead, squeezing your block or the next box. So feel again how that action really brings our awareness and focus into those abdominals, those obliques. Squeeze and scissor the inner thighs towards one another. And then find your breath as we start to hinge forwards. Warrior three arms overhead or at chest. As we lift the right leg off, press through the back of the heel, Keep turning the right hip down towards the floor so the pelvis is even. Reach the arms long, keep pressing into the yoga block, holding the block in the left hand as it comes down to the floor and start to open the chest. Right arm reaches up towards the ceiling, press through that right foot 
and engaging again through the right leg. So that right leg is really strong and active. Again, tuning into the low belly and pelvic floor. And let's pass the brick to the right hand. Slow and controlled, reach it up. Left fingertips can hover or come down. Passing the block back to the left hand. Stabilize for a moment. Keep the chest and hips open to the side one more time. Passing the brick to the right hand, reach it up. And then pass it back to the left hand and hold. Slowly bend that left knee, lower the right foot down back behind you, turn and pivot back to the sides of our mat. Taking a forward fold here, hinging from the hips, tailbone comes back, exhale. And just coming into a fold this time. So you can let your head go. You can even rest your head on the block if that feels good, if that's accessible. Letting go through the back of the neck and shoulders for a moment. And keep drawing the navel towards the spine. And then inhale, lifting halfway. And grab your prop, come all the way back up to stand, turning back forwards. This time finding a warrior one. So right leg is forward, left leg back, but the heel comes down on a 45. Engaging through that left glutes and scissor the inner thighs towards one another. So left hip forward, right hip back. And then option here to reach the arms overhead. Again, you can always keep them down. Find the breath. Draw the shoulders back in line with the torso. And then bending the elbows here and bringing that prop behind the back of the skull. So kind of a cue so that we're not like dropping the head back and gently push the back of the skull into your prop to turn on through those neck flexors and upper back. And then as you inhale, start to lift the center of the sternum, kind of finding a little bit of a back bend here, but more in that upper part of the thoracic spine and the chest. Keep grounding down through the legs, feel the breath, moving through that base of the belly, up through the sides of the ribs.
uh, camel position, but we're gonna add a little twist here to work into those side abdominals. So firm up, press the hands towards one another. And then as you exhale, start to rotate or turn slightly to the right. So hips still stay center, turning through the chest and those outer obliques. Inhale, come through center. Exhale to the left. Again, notice any different sensations here. Inhale, exhale to the right. Now we're taking out the ability to rotate through the hips here. So we really have to move the torso as one here. So you feel a little bit more heat. <laughs> Inhale, come through center. And then exhale, just release the hips down to the heels for a moment. Just balancing effort with some ease. So part of our practice is also being able to let go, releasing. And then we're gonna come back up to the knees one more time as we come into a camel position. So a little bit of stretching for the front of the body. So if you have two yoga bricks, just taking them beside the calves here, they can be at any setting. I have them here at the highest setting, but you can lower it down and take the right fingertips to that block. Again, keeping the hips over the knee. So you're pressing the pelvis forward, activating through the glutes. Good, inhale, reach the left arm up and a little bit of a side stretch here through that left side waist. Push down through the right hand. Good, release. Left hand comes down to the block. Inhale, right arm reaches up. Again, stretching through the right side waist. Keep pressing the pelvis forward, squeezing the glutes. And then releasing back into center. Now option two, bring hands to both uh, blocks this time as we come into our camel. So hips stay forward, squeeze the glutes, push the hands into your blocks as you start to retract the shoulder blades towards one another. So we're thinking of that center of the chest and start to peel the center of the chest open. So pushing down as we're starting to open up. So not leaning back here, the glutes are turned on. Really thinking about that space through the upper part of the spine. Again, pressing down and lifting up. And again, you can lower the bricks, but feeling that space. So if you feel any pinching in the low back, lifting up out of it, really lifting the center of the heart. One more breath. Start to lead with that center of the chest, lifting up and then chin tucks in, head comes up last and just come to sit down on the heels for a moment and neutralize the spine. Find the breath. And then when you're ready, we're gonna have a seat. One more little fun core stability with our block before we cool things down here. So taking your prop like Kleenex box or brick, and we're gonna find our Navasana. So boat pose, shins parallel to the ground and then resting the block on the shins. So we have to balance it here. Option to have the fingers down or you can have the arms lifted. Again, drawing the navel towards the spine, lifting up through the center of the chest and breathe. And turning on those hip flexors and low abdominals. <laughs> Mine are shaking a bit. <laughs> Find the breath. And then we're going to stay in this position and just bring the forearms down behind us, puffing the chest up. So squeeze the shoulder blades together. So the spine is nice and long. 
option to stay here, or you can try this variation of high to low boat three times. As you exhale, extend the legs long. Trying to keep that prop balanced on the shins. Exhale. Inhale, bend the knees. Feel the heat. Feel that energy. That vitality moving through the body. Good. Last one. And then holding here for five, four, three, two. Feet come down and lift up into your Dandasana or staff pose. Coming into a forward fold. So picking the hips up, kind of moving them back to tilt the pelvis. If the back's really tight here, another option is to sit on your block. So you get that tilt. All right, nice long spine through the upper body. Compressing the belly towards the spine. As you inhale, start to come forward. Think belly towards the thighs. So you can bend your knees here, even using your block underneath the knees. So find your variation that feels good here. And coming inward for a moment here. Drawing the belly towards the spine. Supporting the low back as we lengthen through the upper body. And then if it feels good, you can drop the head down. Take one more breath. And then inhale, start to lift the head all the way back up. And then we're just gonna roll ourselves down onto our backs. So one vertebrae at a time, start to lower the upper body and then head and shoulders. Just coming into a bridge pose here as we take our block, like we've been doing kind of between those lower part of the inner thighs for your towel. You're gonna press the feet into the floor, inhale, start to lift the hips up. Hugging the thighs towards one another, lifting up through the pelvic floor. And then exhale slowly. Lowering down. We're going to do that two more times. So inhale, pushing into the feet. A little dynamic bridge here as we activate the glutes. Lengthening through the side waist. And then exhale, slowly lowering down. Last time, inhale. And holding here at the top of your bridge. If it's available, you can wiggle the shoulders under the body. Clasp the hands and just rest them alongside. Keep hugging the thighs towards one another. Feel the tailbone moving towards the heels and kind of like lengthening through the front line of the body as well. If your arms are out underneath you, just slide them out for a moment. Take that brick out from your thighs and then just bring it behind the sacral area, so that flat part of the low back just above the glutes, and then lower the hips down. So we're in a supported bridge. Any setting to your block here, so you can kind of come to that short edge if you want a little bit higher or a little bit less, the flat part. And I like to walk my feet out a little bit and just allow the knees to kind of collapse inwards towards one another into a constructive rest. Really opening up through the low back. Take a few slow, deep breaths. A 
allowing the body to just descend down after quite an active practice today. So slow your breath. One more breath here. If your knees are sort of tenting in, just separate them, walk them back to hip width. And if you're on that medium setting, just lowering to that flat part of the block. And then as we inhale, straighten the legs into a legs up. So the heels are kind of over top of the hips. Just letting all that energy move from the lower half back into our center. Again, conserving that energy, that vitality. Just allow your pelvis to melt down here over the block. And then taking one more breath as we start to bend the knees and lower them down, the feet to the floor. Push the feet into the floor, lift your hips off the block and just move it out from under you. Right knees draw towards the chest, hug your knees or your shins. Inhale, lift your head, nose towards your knees, curling up into a little ball. And then exhale, release arms and legs. <sighs> Shavasana. Just taking a few moments here, settling the body. And as Socrates says, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. So with each breath in, feel that revitalizing new energy come into the body. And then as you exhale, releasing, letting go of any tension. Inhale, vitality. Exhale, letting go of anything that doesn't serve you. Just resting in that awareness of the breath. And take a larger inhale through the nose. And then exhale through the mouth. You're welcome to stay here for a little bit longer. Shavasana if time allows. And if you're ready to move, just gently rolling yourself over to one side. And then slowly making your way up into an upright seated position. Let's close our practice together. Inhale. 
Seal the palms together in that Anjali Mudra or prayer position and then exhale, bring it into your heart center. From my heart to yours, thank you so, so much for joining me and allowing me to guide you through this practice. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It wasn't too fiery for you. Namaste. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Thank you, lady. Have an awesome week, rest of your day. The sun is shining. Hopefully that kind of was a good boost of midday energy to get you through the rest of your day. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Um, feel free to come back to this practice again. And I know that Sue um, is doing a half a class on Saturday and she's focusing on opening our, your heart and you know, the chest and stuff. So that would be a really great balance to this practice. So feel free to check that out. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Have an awesome rest of your day. Again, this will be posted to um, the main page, so uh, as well as the other practices, so you can come back to it. Thank you.